Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Revell 1980 Dodge Ram Charger Kit number 85-4372, originally produced by Monogram in 1980. It's seen a few versions since then, and now Revell has re-released the kit in the original version form with new decals. It's a skill level 4 for ages 12 and up and suggests about five hours for assembly. It's showing its age in the details and design, and there are 96 parts molded in white, chrome, and clear with vinyl tires and water slide decals. The instructions are the typical book format, and you get a fully detailed motor, which would really benefit from some aftermarket wiring. The chassis is somewhat simplified, but the suspension is separate, allowing for the ease of lifting and changing the tires and suspension height. The interior is a basic tub format, and there's no real underbody floor pan, but you could create one. The body details are crisp, and as this mold was not overly used, its details are still pretty sharp. You can see some minor flash, but it also has some very heavy sprue tabs. The glass is fairly thin, but still substantial, and shouldn't da be damaged easily. The overall dimensions are length 8 and 3 16 inches, width 3 and 7 8 inches, and height 3 and 1 16 inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. Mostly, I use Model Master liquid cement for these parts uh, for construction, and sometimes super glue for strength and a white glue for clear parts. Um, we start the build with the motor, and you can partially assemble the block halves, intake heads, front and valve covers, and paint that dark blue. After that's dry, the belt is a rubber with black pulleys and a fan, and the transmission is steel. The exhausts are steel colored, and the breather's flat black. On the motor, paint the oil filter orange and the starter black. Now add the carburetor and the breather and install the alternator and fan to the belt, then install that to the front. Then add the exhaust. Paint the frame semi-gloss black with a steel gas tank and exhaust pipe. And the mufflers are aluminum colored. Now assemble the transfer case and add that to the transmission while installing the motor to the frame. The drive shafts are steel, and the suspensions are semi-gloss black. The springs are steel, and the shocks are your favorite brand's color, and the tie rod assembly is black. Now assemble the tie rod and the front suspension with the shocks, then install the rear suspension and springs. Assemble the front seats and the rear seat, and paint the tub and seats your choice of colors. I used a gray color. The roll bar is assembled and painted flat black with a red fire extinguisher. The armrest is aluminum and gray, and the shift boots are rubber with black knobs. I decided to carpet my, my truck with some carpet flocking that I bought online. You can find it at uh, online retailers. And you just put a little white glue down on a base coat of color, uh, about the same shade as the carpeting, and then uh, sprinkle it on and let it um, uh, adhere and then shake off the loose stuff. I also printed out some images that I found online of floor mats to include in the, uh, at the floor pan of my truck. So you just print them out on some uh, uh, paper with a colored printer and cut them out and glue them in place with some clear white glue. The details in the interior are finished in black and all the seats are installed and finally finish it up by installing the roll bar. Paint the dra dashboard gray to match the interior and detail it with some black. And then use the decals in the kit for the instruments. The Citizen Band radio is black. The steering wheel and column are gray uh, with silver appointments. Install the column and the wheel in the dash. And then place the dash into the interior tub on the slots provided. Now it's time to install the interior tub to the frame of the truck. Now we'll prepare the body for painting, and note that there are three major injection tabs or sprue tabs on the bottom side of the truck rails that you have to carefully remove.
Clip them off uh, far back and then sand them off down to the base. Assemble the tailgate to the body and add the radiator and front panel. Then wet sand the whole truck to remove any blemishes or mold lines you can find and smooth it out to prepare it for painting. Prime all the body parts and panels inside and out with a good quality product that you can sand and smooth out for the next step. I decided to paint this in a two-tone uh, just as some of the originals were done so you always paint the lighter color first and work to the darker colors. So I used a DuPont silver base for my first color. You'll need to use some really good tape and I used some of the 3M fine line blue tape and some low tack masking tape to tape off all the areas that will remain silver. Then I painted my second color which is a DuPont silver blue. Once cured I used an aftermarket product called bare metal foil that you just stick on like tape and then remove the excess with a sharp hobby knife. You can highlight all your chrome trim that way. Now add all the exterior decals shown like the marker lights here. Clear windows are a must for any good looking model. I always dip mine in future floor polish and wick it off until it's dried and then use it that way for a clean look. But I also added some window tint uh, by Alclad Products. Slide the interior tub carefully into the body straight up and shoehorn it into place until the body fits flush onto the chassis and frame. Now we'll finish up the front end. Paint the fan shroud black, flat black, and install that in place. The hose is a rubber color and that's installed. Then use the decals on the bumper and paint the winch red and, uh, with a steel cable and install that into the bumper. The grill gets a black wash of 50-50 flat black and thinner to fill the recessed areas. Now buff off the grill and insert the lenses then install the bumper and grill. Add the mirrors in place on the trunk truck and then finally add the hood. As you can see in these comparison pictures when I first installed the grill I noticed that the hood no longer fit. There was an interference at the front end so I simply scraped off some of the underside of the hood especially towards the front end to make sure that it would nestle down into place. I decided to print out some optional license plates to personalize my kit so I used my logo and printed out the plate on some plain white paper with a, a colored printer and then I cut it out added a little piece of clear tape to the top of it and then glued it on to the license plate areas later with some clear glue. Now gather up the parts to button up the rear. The tire holder is steel. The gas can is red with steel strap. The tire cover is the two tones of the body color. Now attach the tire holder with the tire and the gas can to the tailgate. Add the tag, license tag to the bumper and the decals and install the bumper. Then paint the tail lights transparent red and white and install those. Next add the antenna. The tires are the last to assemble and install for this build. Paint the wheel backs and the inserts aluminum and to give the tires a worn look just kind of press and roll the tread on some fine grit sandpaper. This roughs it up and makes it look like a realistic street use tire. Insert a rim into each tire and a back with the insert in each tire and install onto the axle of one of the four corners of the ram charger. This kit's pretty efficient. There weren't many parts left over. A few spare light lenses from a different build and the decals and that's about it. Make no mistake, this is an 80's era kit and it lacks in some detail and refinement that you'd find in modern kits. For example, the interior molding on the door panels is pretty light. The motor is kind of simplistic and it's just a stock motor. There's no custom parts or chrome. Aftermarket wires would make it look much better, however. The chassis lacks as the suspension is hollow on top and there's no floor pan. Uh, the frame just mounts to the interior. But all that notwithstanding, it's a good build. It just needs a little extra cleanup and it's a great subject matter kit. It's not hard to build and I'd recommend that just about any intermediate builder could make a fine example of this for their shelf. The CB radio is really a great touch and I think you're going to love building this kit and making it a nice display in your home. 
We hope you've liked this step-by-step -step review from Right on Replicas, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can also find us on Facebook and on the web at www.writeonreplicas.com. Thanks again.